AMPOL released its future energy and decarbonisation strategy last year in May with a commitment to uh, reduce our own operational emissions to net zero by 2040 uh, and then to spend a minimum of $100 million, now $150 million, uh, developing low emission solutions for our customers. When we look at light passenger vehicles in particular, we can see internationally and from our own modelling uh, that they will replace uh, ice petrol, petrol vehicles over time. Uh, and so it's really important for us to play the role that we believe Ampol can play in the future to provide the customer with the confidence to buy an EV and know that whether they're at home or whether they're out on the road, they're going to be able to have um, a good charging experience. You're expanding your network. So I believe at the moment you've got about 10 charging stations, but this new plan is to expand that to about 100 service stations. We're expanding to, as part of this initial phase, to 121 sites across our network, a minimum of two charging bays per site. And what we have at the moment across Ampol as uh, the leading fuels provider is a network right across the country that covers around 1,900 sites. And that network coverage is really important to our customers. And we see that by putting a charging solution onto those sites, starting with these first 121 sites, we can play a really important role in enabling EV solutions for our customers. Now, is this investment justified given the slow take up of electric vehicles in Australia? I think it's really important for a company like Ampol as the largest fuel provider today to play a leading role in putting that enabling infrastructure in place so that our customers can have the confidence to, to buy EVs. Uh, in our view, scale at the sort of earlier part of this transition is going to be driven by fleet companies, uh, government corporate fleets. And the feedback from a lot of those customers is they want us to be able to replicate uh, a simple, convenient, reliable uh, uh, fuel package similar to what we provide to their, uh, to their people today. So when we look at uh, the role we can play, having that network coverage uh, across the first 121 sites um, is going to be really important to enable them to, uh, to make those purchasing decisions and help them, uh, our customers, if you like, to decarbonise their own businesses. Now, as you said, Ampol is positioning itself for an energy transition. You've also got some government funding to make cleaner gasoline. But would you be taking these measures without the government funding that you're getting? Oh, look, I think it's really important to work in partnership and we work very closely with, uh, with governments, both state and federal. Uh, the economics can be a little challenging when the demand is not yet there. And so to bring some early scale and enable that demand to really come through, uh, I think it's important to, uh, uh, to stimulate that, uh, that market and that opportunity. And so that's why we work with government. Um, certainly uh, uh, around 70% of this expenditure all in is very much being funded by, by Ampol, but it does make a difference to have some support through the Arena Future Fuels Grant. Because of the war in Ukraine, we've seen oil prices surge above 100 US dollars a barrel. Of course, that's hitting the bottom line of oil refiners like yourself. Are you worried about the impact of a long war? Look, I think we've seen uh, the impact of uh, of real volatility in energy markets and commodity markets more broadly. Uh, look, that is concerning, uh, and it's concerning when you look at the price of uh, the price of fuel and the impact that we're seeing right across uh, right across the economy in terms of inflation. Um, we need to manage that as best we can um, and ensure that we're doing everything possible to uh, to manage uh, those exposures and uh, looking to put in place uh, uh, as competitive an offer for our customers as we can, recognising that there is that, uh, that petrol price pain out there at the moment. Are you worried about a backlash from customers when the cut in the fuel excise ends? Look, uh, I think the fuel excise uh, reduction, the 20 cents, uh, was a step that was taken to provide some short-term relief, but it is just that, it's short-term relief from uh, the, ten the geopolitical tensions and the impact that that's having on the, uh, on the whole energy sector at the moment, including oil and, and flowing through into, into fuel prices globally. Um, so uh, 
I don't think it's going to be affordable uh, for the government to, uh, to carry on indefinitely, and I think both sides of politics have made that clear. I think the customer is sort of becoming accustomed to seeing, uh, to seeing that volatility in fuel prices and um, the, re the removal of the excise reduction uh, when it happens in six months' time will be, uh, be part of that volatility. So if the war is still going in six months' time, is there a risk that fuel prices, petrol prices, could jump above $3 a litre? Look, I'm, uh, I'm not, a, a, not a, a very good forecaster, actually, in terms of where world energy markets are going to go. It's a very uncertain and volatile environment. Um, there's a very wide spectrum of views out there as to where energy prices could end up. Uh, certainly from, uh, from my point of view, our point of view, we, we certainly hope to see a, um, a resolution to the tragedy that's unfolding uh, in the Ukraine, uh, and hopefully uh, that uh, can over time lead to uh, some better outcomes for our customers.